Hello everyone and welcome back to the Keep Productive YouTube channel, it is Francesco here. In today's video we will be checking out Tempo, which is an email client that is available for Mac. However, they do plan on releasing an iOS and Android version. In today's video, we're going to overview what it is, how it works, how much it costs, and all that you need to know about this new email application. If you are new here, it'd be absolutely fantastic to have you as a subscriber, so make sure you hit the subscription button below. So let's roll into today's video. Now I'll be overviewing Tempo. This is an application I actually first saw on Product Hunt a few years ago now. They're releasing their Tempo 2.0 and essentially it's an email client that works on your Mac. As I said, it uh, is available or coming soon to Android and iOS, but they're only currently supporting Gmail and Google Apps, which is Google Workspace now um, as their way to connect up. Now, what makes Tempo a little bit different to some extent is the fact that it's focused on minimalism. Um, I would say that its killer feature is batching. We'll talk about that a little bit more, but the application itself looks really attractive to use and their focus is really for you to focus in terms of removing and stuff that sort of gets you too involved inside of email. Now, let's talk about the pricing first because I feel like it's important to flag this up. Now, Tempo was free for the period of the beta. However, they're now charging 10 euros per month. Um, and also, if you want to go for the yearly pricing, it's 99 euros a year, which I would say isn't too bad in terms of pricing. It's sort of like a really um, medium ground pricing between the likes of uh, Newton and the likes of Superhuman but also sort of falls into the bracket more of what Hay.com pricing is. Um, and I would say it's more a competitor to Hay because of the way that it aims to make you a bit more productive using their techniques. Now, here we go. I got an account set up and created. Um, I plugged it into my Gmail account. And as you can see, this is a design in front of me. So something I forgot to mention while making a video is that they do these little video pop-ups when you're getting started with your account. And it's actually really good because they set up like these schedule things with you. So you understand the concept of batching and you can start implementing it. And of course that will be explained a little later in this video. So what's really nice is they've got these lovely animations in the middle. And what I like about this application is it keeps everything clear. So as you can see here, instantly you arrive and it says that my next batching of new mail will arrive at 2 p.m. Which is quite nice because they force you, well you can actually turn this off and on and you can go back to a traditional method, but they sort of force you not to touch email between then and there. So as you can see here, my next batch is at 2 p.m. And you can see here, you can do a force batch if you want to, so you can bring in emails, maybe we'll do that near the end but you can actually change your priority batching settings here. So you can see your schedule here. You can choose when and where you want to see your emails. So for example, in this case, Monday to Friday I've set, normally check my emails at sort of eight and two, and you can add additional ones there. So what's really cool is it won't let anything in. Uh, you can even switch notifications off, but if you wanna be notified when that match comes in, that's quite handy there. So I really like the sort of methodology behind that. Um, I believe Boomerang had a feature like this, or I think it was Boomerang, where you could pause your inbox for a while. And a lot of people like this because it really stunts your sort of need to jump on things. Um, but then again, some people don't because they're like, I need to see what's coming up. However, I guess it's sort of like how traditional mail works. When mail comes through your door, uh, it's traditionally in a big bunch <laughs> altogether. Uh, I doubt people get bunches these days. So up the top here, you can see that they've got a few different options in their menu. You've got to do, reminders, drafts, priority in which we're on and other. So let's start with to do. So inside of your email, if you find something you want to do, you can actually flag it as a to do. So if I went and found an email, in this case, I'll go to archived. And as you can see, this is the email that I want to add to my to-do. So all I have to do is press to-do up here, go back over to to-do, and you can see that, as you can see here, it's landed here, ready for me to get things done. A lot of people like have their email as their to-do list, um, especially people who spend a lot of time in their email as sort of the people who, um, you know, move the sort of strings of a company or move the strings in a team like managers. 
So you can see here that naturally you can interact with it, but there is this mode called focus mode, which is available. So this helps you to actually engage in email and you can get started doing it straight away. So as you can see at the top, you're in sort of focus mode and you can start writing the body of the email here and naturally dive into it. Now you can actually interact with the email by adding a VIP, sta VIP status, which basically gives it a star inside of the account and also giving it labels uh, like you would inside of uh, say Gmail and you can even mark it as spam or reply to it directly there. But this focus mode is quite nice um, in terms of getting started and down here if you didn't notice you can actually go ahead and attach something as well as choose a preview of it or a markdown edition. A lot of people like to go with the preview because they want to see what the other person will be seeing on their end. You can stop it up in the top left hand corner and you can still use the features like archive or snooze. Uh, but for example, if I snooze this one, you can see there that it looks like I've got my focused mode done. So I can go back to to do. So reminders are basically snoozed. So for example, if you wanted to snooze an email, you can see that I've snoozed this one for tomorrow at 8 a.m. and the same with this one on Monday. But as you can see here, this is a way for you to see what's coming up and it'll pop back into your, I believe your next batch when you see them, which is quite helpful if you want to get nudged on stuff. But again, remember they don't have a mobile application, so you won't necessarily get nudged on your mobile devices. Drafts is like it says on the tin and priority is really whenever you bring in the next step. So as you can see, a new batch of emails has come in. I'm going to sort that batch. And this is what sorting looks like. As you can see here, I can go through the process of sorting it and it comes up in a special sorting mode here. As you can see here, I've got sorting done so I can go back to priority. I like as well, one of the things that um, you do when you force a batch is you have to hold the button for two seconds. So I guess it's sort of being a bit more intentional and in whether you want to do an email. So there we go, it sort of pauses you for a second and it fetches new mail for you. So I quite like that feature in terms of how it sort of forces you to think about whether you should be checking that email. Other emails are naturally sorted, so they're not priority items. Um, they're sort of like newsletters and things like that that will come in. And you can actually force a batch here too as well if you wanted to. Over on this left hand side, you can see all of the options here as well as your outbox, sent and trash and spam. You can go to preferences and change a few details. For example, setting tempo as your default email application or playing sounds and showing avatars. You can even change the alternative actions when it comes to holding options. Over here as well, if you wanted to add more accounts, you can. You've also got an inbox as well. If you wanted to go back to a traditional classic single inbox, you can do as well. But as you can see here, priorities, person to person conversations with everything else being sorted into other. You've got signatures as well. If you did want to add a signature, you can add it through Markdown or HTML, which is perfect if you want to transfer it from other applications. And there are a few shortcuts when it comes to learning all of the different features and you can actually change what they define as each feature which is quite cool and that's sort of a bit of speed learning there. So you can choose to set a reminder on the send as well if that's something you wanted to do. Just know they also add a signature automatically if you started to use Tempo. So the search works really well as well. It's really clean and you can search by label, by folder or by attachment as well. So all in all, this application is actually a pretty decent looking application. It is on the higher pricing of email. If you're looking for this versus say, Hey, I would probably take a look into what system works best with you. I think Hey has a free trial. I believe this has a free trial as well for Mac. Um, but remember that Hey has mobile applications right now that you can access. And also, Hey also gives you a custom email address when you get started. There's also, I guess, some more minimalism focus in here as well. And if you're someone that is not willing to pay the superhuman pricing, but wants an application that looks like superhuman, maybe doesn't work in the same speed or in the same, um, I guess, to some extent, the same sort of processing because superhuman has some advanced workflows, some uh, ways that you can use snippets, 
but does a, a nice job in terms of forcing you to be a bit more intentional about your time, this could be a great application. So I'll include the details below. As I said, this is something that um, I'm gonna be checking out a little bit more, but it looks really nice. I think it works very well. And if you're someone that uses only Google Mail applications and Mac, for the moment, this could be a good bet for your email. And I definitely put it on par with the quality that I see inside of apps like Newton and Superhuman. Anyway, folks, I hope you enjoyed today's review. Let me know what you think in the description, but in the comments below, and I look forward to reading some of what you think. If you have used it and compared it to apps like Hey or Superhuman, we'd love to hear your opinion um, because obviously that gives other people useful advice about which to go with. Anyway, folks, a big thank you, and I'll talk to you all very soon. Cheerio.